Good morning and welcome to our online worship at the parish churches of Skirmley Moons Bay and Inverkip. A very warm welcome to you all again as we join together online on this, the third Sunday of Easter. And as again my prayer that we are all blessed as we come together to worship God for who he is and for all that he's done for us. We hope that you are keeping well and safe through these very challenging times and if there's anything that we can do as a church to help you or anyone you know to get through this difficult time then please contact us through either of our church's Facebooks or our websites using the website addresses that will appear on the screen. We are also aware that there are some people who have no access to internet so these online services can also be made available by DVD and you will be able to request these using the same contact details. I would also like to start this morning by saying a huge thank you to Jack for her lovely service last Sunday and for the way in which she really glorified God through everything that she said. It is not an easy thing to stand in front of a camera and I thought that she handled it so well. She was a real natural, and the way that she allowed God to flow through her and bless so many of you was just amazing. Jesus says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We need your presence on the long road, Lord, the road between fear and hope, the road between the place where all is lost and the place of the resurrection. Like the disciples walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power and let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. We'll begin our worship this morning by joining our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come again this morning to worship you, we pray, Lord, that you help us now and always to remember what you have done for us, to remember your amazing sacrifice on the cross, Lord, so that we may have eternal life. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life and the abundant life that you came to give us. Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for the nearness of your presence through these difficult days. And we ask, Lord, that you help us focus again fully on you this morning. Father, we thank you that you give us light and when the darkness tries to consume us, we praise you that your light wins out every time. We give you thanks again, Father, for your love and your kindness, and for the way in which you speak to us and draw us near to you. Lord, help us to know how much you love us, and may we return that love back to you with all of our praise and our worship now and always. Father, we thank you so much for everything and may all that we do bring glory to your name. All this we pray in Jesus' wonderful name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will now sing together our first hymn, My Jesus, My Saviour.
Our Bible reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. On that same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him, but somehow did not recognize him. Jesus said to them, What are you talking about to each other as you walk along? They stood still with sad faces. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening there these last few days? What things, he asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet and was considered by God and by all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and he was crucified. And we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Some of the women of our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb but could not find his body. They came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he is alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, how foolish you are, how slow you are to believe everything the prophets said. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us. The day is almost over and it is getting dark. So he went to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took the bread, and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem where they found the 11 disciples gathered together with the others and saying, The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two then explained to them what had happened on the road and how they had recognized the Lord when he broke the bread. Amen. We all know that exercise is good for us. Many of you will know just how much I like to keep physically fit and running many miles or going on a bike is something which I do almost daily. But for me, one of the most underrated forms of exercise we can do is walking. People often ask me, how can I get fit? They say that they really want to take up running and are looking for my advice to get into it. I always tell them to start by walking. I advise them to get out and walk every day for between 30 to 60 minutes, regardless of what the weather's like. And I can guarantee them that Within a month, they will feel so much better and will want to keep it going. Walking is good for us for so many different reasons. On Easter afternoon, two of Jesus' disciples went for a walk and they found that after that one walk, their lives were never the same again. This was a walk like no other walk they had ever done before and one that was so good for them for so many different reasons. These two disciples were walking home from Jerusalem, headed to a town called Emmaus. They were physically and emotionally exhausted. It had been a long and very confusing week. As they walked, they were joined by a man who could sense their disappointment and asked what they were talking about. The disciples stopped. Cleopas, one of his disciples in his tracks, he was shocked that this man didn't know what had happened in Jerusalem. How could he have not heard? 
everyone in Jerusalem was talking about Jesus and what had happened to him. Cleopas began explaining to this man, Jesus of Nazareth was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. Here we can almost sense the excitement in Cleopas' words as he recalls the fond memories of Jesus before his death. Jesus was like no one they had ever met or seen before. It was like living during the days of the Old Testament prophets, but even better. Jesus was preaching was powerful. He was drawing tens of thousands of people to hear him. The miracles he performed were absolutely amazing. He was casting out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead, calming storms, walking on water. It was awesome. And Cleopas confesses to the man as he walked, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Cleopas and his fellow disciple had hoped that this Jesus of Nazareth was going to be the one who would restore the nation of Israel to the prominent position that they thought it deserved. With every miracle, their hopes grew that Jesus was the one who was finally going to overthrow the Roman Empire and establish a kingdom on earth that would bring peace to God's oppressed people, people like him. But all their hopes had seemed to come crashing down around them. Cleopas said, the chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. Their king was crucified. Their hopes for an earthly kingdom dashed. Now what? How could they have hope when the one they placed their hope in was dead? Sure, there were some women who had gone to the place where Jesus was buried and said that angels had told them that Jesus was alive. But that just didn't seem right. What was the likelihood of someone coming back from the dead? It just didn't make any sense. So they started walking home, disappointed and confused. The man looked over at Cleopas and said, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have said. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And then the risen Jesus, whose identity was hidden from these two men, begins to walk with them through the scriptures to begin to refocus and refresh their hope. And the hope Jesus gave to those disciples is the same hope that the living Jesus has given to all of us. When we individually made that choice and decided to follow Jesus, at that very moment, our walk began with him. And from that moment, we were given a sure hope that comes from what God has promised as ours. From that moment, God revealed to us that our true identity is in him. An identity that says we are deeply loved, we are fully pleasing, we are totally forgiven, we are free and accepted in Christ. And from that moment on, we knew a love that we never knew before. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, Jesus has walked with us through the scriptures growing in our knowledge and understanding of him as our saviour. We have discovered the source of suffering and sadness, frustration and fear, guilt and death, and that source is sin. Sin does create a truly hopeless situation for the sinner. As Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. But as we walked with Jesus through the Bible, we have learned of the hope that only he can provide. It is the hope that the prophet Isaiah described in Isaiah 53 verse 5, when he pointed to Jesus and said, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus came into this world not merely to walk beside us and cheer us on to try and live better lives. No, Jesus came to walk in our place. He faced the temptations of those early teenage years, the challenges of changing relationships. He suffered the loss of friends, overcame the temptations of wanting to please people, 
and find identity in the things of this earth and endured the bitterness of betrayal. But unlike us, his walk never wavered from following his father's will. He walked to the cross and placed the punishment of our actions upon himself. While it may have appeared that the cross had crushed any hope the disciples ever had, it was actually the complete opposite. The cross gave them a hope that was better than they could ever have imagined. The cross takes us to the empty tomb of Easter to see a living Jesus. Jesus rises from the dead to announce that the eternal glorious life in heaven awaits us. Punishment from God has been replaced by peace with God. Fear replaced with forgiveness. That is the hope that Jesus gave to his disciples as he walked with them. The hope that Jesus gives to us all because he lives. You sometimes hear people talking about their hopes and dreams for the future. Some of those dreams are very ambitious, especially when you listen to children. Dreams to be an astronaut, a superhero, a professional athlete, which is what I wanted to be when I was young, an actress or a singer. As we grow, our hopes and dreams definitely change a bit. College and career aspirations, hope to buy a home, hopes for our children and our grandchildren, hopes to attend their graduations and weddings. Ambition can clearly be a gift from God and we should have a, des a desire to use what God has given us in abilities, time and energy. But often, our hopes and dreams can throw us off track, leading us away from Jesus instead of walking with him. The hope for popularity among, uh, amongst other people or attempts to convince us that God is not real and church is not important at this time in our lives. The hope of a certain career or lifestyle results in leaving little time for our family or convinces us to compromise our Christian beliefs. The hope of happiness leads us to give up on a difficult marriage or give in to the temptations of the world that can lead to some real, lasting, serious consequences for us and others. Did you notice what Jesus did when the hopes of those two disciples got off track? Where did he take them? He took them for a walk through what the Bible says to refocus and refresh their hope. And we also need those regular walks with Jesus through his word to bring our hopes, dreams, and ambitions to him. And who better to walk with? It's always good to walk with someone who knows where they're going. Jesus not only knows where we are going, but he also knows where we have been and what we are going through right now. And as we ask Jesus into our hearts, we need to be willing to let him shape our hopes, dreams, and ambitions so that they may line up with what he knows is best for us. We need to be willing to let Jesus comfort us, encourage us, and strengthen us when we walk through this life and we are often confused or life is difficult and at times it can be very painful. We need to let Jesus show us the hope that he has given to us and that our, our decisions may be in line with his will for us. Taking those walks with Jesus is not only good for us, but they are vital for our faith to stay refreshed and focused. I remember being so excited when both of my children were learning to walk, encouraging them to take their first steps uh, not only did I think it would be very exciting to see my sons walking around, but selfishly, I was looking forward to not having to carry them about all the time. Then when they started walking, I realized that now I had a whole new world of worries. Running into the street, wandering away in the shop, falling downstairs. And as hard as we try, even the best parent can't always be there to hold their child's hand and walk beside them. But you know what? That's all right when you know that Jesus is walking with them and with us. If that child knows Jesus through faith, 
They have everything that they need. They have a powerful, loving, faithful, and living Savior walking beside them through whatever they go through in this life. And that is what Jesus does with all of us who decide to put our trust in him. My hope for us is as we continue through the worry, hurt, and tragedy that this coronavirus has caused, is that we still take those walks with Jesus. After all, it is good for us. So today, let us walk with Jesus and let all of our hope be in him. Amen. Well, let us again join our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we again humbly come before you, we ask that you help us to trust you more. Lord, forgive us when we struggle to see your hand at work in our lives and the lives of others, or we try to solve problems in our own strength, and help us to remember that it's you who sustains us in every aspect of our lives. Father, we ask that you keep us under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Lord, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are low during these very difficult days. Father, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. Help them to know that you are with them through their struggles and may your healing hand come upon them. Father, we thank you for the response to the virus around the world. We thank you for the amazing work that you're doing through the response in our local communities. We ask that you continue to enable this work and that all workers and volunteers will remain healthy. Lord, we pray for people spending time in quarantine or self-isolation. We pray that they continue to receive the support that they need and that they stay safe. Father, we thank you and give you praise for the commitment of those in voluntary isolation as they play a real part in slowing the spread of the virus. Lord, we pray for our governments and world leaders. We ask that you bless them with wisdom that they need to make decisions that will benefit their countries and the whole world. Father, we pray that the spread of the virus will slow and Lord, bless the work of the people and organizations who are working on a treatment. In a moment of silence, we now lift up to you all who we know that are in such desperate need of your touch at this time and ask that you draw very near to them all. Father, we thank you that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you and we love you. All this we pray in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. We will now bring today's worship to a close by singing together a hymn from the CH4 hymn book, number 167. And again, the words will come on the screen so we can sing together. It's, Guide me, O the great Jehovah.
righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. So let us go now believing in this and all of God's amazing promises. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.